my name is Susan Tate and I am the RN Community Coordinator for Blessing Home Care and Hospice and we will be having monthly interactive educational mini, mini clips of available resources to the Tri-State Senior Community called Aging Gracefully Series. Please continue to look for these series and contact me with any questions at 217-242-9453 or you can contact me at susan.tate at blessinghealth.org. Hi, my name is Caitlin Woodward and I'm the Community Relations Director at Bickford of Quincy. These educational series are to help seniors and their loved ones navigate living the new life that's in front of them by enriching their lives through the seasons of change and making the best independent days yet to come. Join us to learn about these topics. You can reach me at 217-316-6088 or at caitlin.woodward at bickfordseniorliving.com. Hi, I'm Mara Clinging smith Regional Director for the Quincy Office of the Better Business Bureau. Today I want to talk to you about recognizing signs of a scam, those red flags that really should make you say, wait a minute, this might be a scam. The first one is payment method. Now, if someone asks you to pay by way of a gift card or wire transfer or ask you to use a reloadable debit card, that's a scam. No legitimate company is going to ask you to pay that way. Now, what happens is if you go and get one of those reloadable cards or a vanilla one card or uh, they call them the green dot money cards, even eBay motor cards, we've seen those too. If you read the numbers off the back of that to the person on the phone or send them the picture of it, that money is going to be transferred off that card immediately as soon as they hang up. It's untraceable and scammers like that because then we can't ever find who they are and your money's gone forever. So if someone asks you to pay by that type of an unusual payment method, it's a scam. Simply hang up and walk away. Now the next one we want to talk about is threatening or harassing behavior. Now a lot of times um, you'll get a phone call or an email from someone that says that they're from the IRS or the Social Security Administration or um, another government official and they're threatening you with arrest or threatening you with a lawsuit. Um, maybe they're going to threaten your benefits are going to go away. Here's the thing, that's a scam too. No government agency is gonna call you and threaten you. They're not gonna ask you to make a payment over the phone. They're not gonna threaten your benefits to take them away so that you pay a fee. If that happens, simply hang up. And you know, on another note, if you're doing business with an unfamiliar company or a person and they're harassing you, even if it's a legitimate company, that is not okay. And, and you are owed respect, so simply walk away. You, no one should ever harass you or try to pressure you into anything. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is unsolicited phone calls and emails. Now, these are phishing campaigns. It says there's a problem. Now, it could be your um, bank account, it could be your credit card, your internet provider, your TV, your cable provider, and they're saying there's a problem with this account. Now, if it's an email, they want you to click on a link that's going to lead you to a website that looks like the real thing. It's not, it's fake. And they're gonna ask you to input your username and your account password or whatever. And of course, they're gonna try and steal your information. So <clears throat> legitimate companies will not ask you to click on a link in an email if there truly is a problem. What they're going to do is ask you to go to their website and log in, putting your information in that way. You should always enter that address yourself to a computer. Say you want to go to Comcast.net. You need to enter that in the bar yourself and not click on a link. Lastly, just a general tip. Never give your personal information over the phone to anyone who calls you. You have no way of knowing who is really calling you. You can't always trust caller ID. So if someone calls you and says, I need to verify your social security number. I'm from Medicare. I'm from your bank. You need to hang up and actually call on a number that you have verified to be true. Ask them if there's a problem and then you can give them that information if you choose. But you should treat your confidential information like cash. Your name, your birth date, your social security number, your Medicare number, your banking information, any of that. Treat it like cash. You can always find tips like this on our website at bbb.org and we have a Facebook page, BBB Quincy.